Good morning, Rampart. I'm Caleb Bozier. And I'm Rogan Harris. And welcome back to KRAM. As we begin, there are a lot of our students that have recently won big honors representing the school. At FBLA districts, 31 of our RHS students qualified for the state competition. In athletics, Emily Huxable recently surpassed 1,000 points in her high school basketball career for Rampart. And Duke Pingree got his 2,000th save for Rampart hockey. We start off this week with a deep dive into yearbook. It is often overlooked in school environments, so we wanted to get a bigger picture of what they do for our school. All of our high school years can be recalled through a written memory, our yearbook. In order for our students to have the opportunity to purchase a printed remembrance, the yearbook crew puts in a lot of work. Making the yearbook starts with developing theme ideas, coming up with um, you know what we want to cover, first of all. We have basically our entire book planned out before the school year even starts. And then we start assigning people um, spreads and like assigning people to get certain content when we start getting like a more solidified outline of what we want in the book. We go in after school a lot of times to work on it so it's more than just a class, it's a hobby and it takes a, it takes a lot of work. Because there's a lot to do in yearbook, the appeal to join comes through many different motivations. I just always loved like taking photos so that was the first thing that interested me. It is a lot more than that but that is just what like was my first interest. It just seemed like a really big community and I, re I, w I needed that in my sophomore year. I didn't have a lot of friends. I, I met so many people that I just hang out with a lot now. It's a really unique niche thing that people are a part of and I, I think it's um, definitely filled a part of my teaching career that I didn't know um, that I wanted filled. With the amount of hours and energy put into making the yearbook, a closely woven friendship forms with those in the class. My favorite part about your book is definitely the community. Um, I'm a senior and I was never really involved in like any school activities or anything during my first three years at Rampart. Um, so like getting to know more about what's going on in the school because of your book and getting like being able to cover it because of it really helps. It's just a giant like team and all the people in your book are so sweet and we all work together and I love having those people. Miss Bailey's classroom is always somewhere I can go. Um, you know, whether it's about yearbook or not, like it's just a great safe place and I love to have that. Having a yearbook means something not only to Rampart, but high schools throughout the nation. The lasting impact is extensive to all those that purchase one. Everybody remembers the yearbook. Everybody remembers, and especially their senior year, they look back and they're like, oh yeah, this is what so-and-so looked like and this is what happened. I think it just like tells everyone's story. Like you learn so much about other people with it. I think everyone should get a yearbook for that reason. Um, we've won some uh, state awards recently since I started advising and then um, we've also been recognized nationally by um, not only the JEA but also through our publishing company Walsworth um, as one of the top 5% books in um, the Walsworth company this last school year. My biggest goal in all of this is to make sure that students are covered, um, they're well represented and that we have, you know, we give a voice to the voiceless um, in a way that is um, time stamped and marked in history forever. If you want to commemorate your high school years, getting a yearbook is the perfect way to do so. This has been Fiona Vachta reporting for KRAM. Can't wait to read it. Be sure to order your yearbook today for $80 at yearbookforever.com. By a show of hands, do you know anybody in Drama Club? No, oh, yeah, I do. Let's see. Uno, dos, tres. That was a rhetorical question, but let's take a peek behind the auditorium doors and see what Drama Club is. With this year's musical, Sister Act, coming up, Karen wanted to dive in and see how students can get involved with the theater program. Uh, so, Drama Club is a thing that the theater department does. We kind of meet up and do activities once a month. And then we also do some like extra things, like right now we're doing an audition workshop to prep people for auditions for the musical. Drama Club is it's the group of drama kids who just hang out and have fun. Drama Club is a group of people that kids can join to do theater related things. They're, it's not performing, but just get together and do some theater related type activities. Uh, it's different every month. Uh, we've done things like an open mic. We've done just like some fun activities with games. It really just depends on the month. Is like something the directors choose, which is either playing games and or doing little competitions or even like open mic night where people can do whatever they want on stage. 
uh, where typically there's a lot of fun events that either relate to a holiday that's coming up, so like Christmas and stuff, or it could relate to a show, or it could just relate to just having fun. Uh, well, I've always been involved in theater, and I'm on our officer council, so I've just kind of always jumped in the drama club. So. Funny story, my mom did drama here at Rampart, and I was like, I want to do it, so I said, why not, and I joined and eventually got higher up. I was in after school tech for the productions, and I heard that there was a drama club too that had activities, and I thought that would be fun. What got me into drama club was uh, just a love for theater. Um, I love doing shows and stuff like that, and so uh, it was really easy for me to just be like, oh, hey, this is happening on Friday. I get to hang out with a lot of cool people and do some theater-related things. I'd love to do that. I uh, just show up we'll, on our Rampart uh, Theater Instagram page. We'll post about each drama club activity, and everyone's welcome. I think our next meeting is the week of Valentine's Day. Um, people can join by looking for our um, advertisements for activities and just showing up to the activity. If you want to learn more and know when the next event is, follow the Ram HS Theater Instagram account. This is Cameron Hazeltine reporting for KRAM. You can check when the next drama club meeting is on the calendar in the band hall. You learn something new every day. Cheer got a new coach this year, so naturally we want to know more about the coach. And maybe, just maybe, we will learn more about the team as well. Here at Rampart, the cheerleaders play an important role in raising school spirit and supporting our sports teams. You may have noticed the absence of the cheerleaders at football games this year and wondered what they've been up to. Rampart has been searching for a new coach to continue the cheer legacy here at our school. While she gets settled in, Karim decided to interview Coach Monique, as well as some new and returning cheerleaders to get a deeper understanding of the change. I've been trying to get back into a cheer program for a really long time, and opportunity kind of presented itself to me, so I applied for the position, and very excited to be here. I think that she's a great coach. She's really dedicated to our team, and she's taught us a lot already. She's really sweet. I really like how motivated she gets us. She really tries her best to like just get us motivated and um, work us hard to be the best we can be. Well, she's really nice. I think she's um, like super cool coach. Whenever we do conditioning and stuff, she does it with us, so that's really nice. So we're not um, like dying by ourselves. My coaching style is unique because I did do this for a better 10 part of the year as I actually cheered. So when I tell the girls that they can do something, it's not impossible because I have done it before. She tries her best to stay, keep us motivated without being condescending in a way. Like a lot of coaches I've had in the past were really like they used condescension and aggression to make you motivated, but she uses kindness and compassion to keep you motivated. I like that she's patient, so she's willing to run over the choreography. If you have any questions about anything, she's always has an answer. I like that she has experience. I feel like that definitely helps her to be able to show us that we really can bring it and learn the things that she's talking about. And she just helps us a lot. We wanted to learn what a practice looked like for our cheer team, as well as their favorite part of the season so far. Me and Kaylin, because we're captains, we lead stretching. Um, then we work on whatever we have to work on that day. It usually changes, so we do choreography, stunts, things like that. Um, and games, we go through our cheers and do our best to support our team. Games are really just team captain-led, so like team captains call cheers and we cheer and we do dances with the band if the band's there, which is really fun. I think everything we do with our coach is it's really nice because she's just a super cool person. My favorite part of the season has been seeing the girls actually get to put all their hard work out on the basketball court and show exactly what they've been working so hard for. I really just think like getting to know everybody as friends and being close, like even in school. Probably whenever she encourages us when we hit our stunts, like the first time we did a twist as a team, she got really excited for us because we hit them and she was super happy. My personal philosophy as a coach is I believe that these athletes need to build friendships um, um, because great friendships are built on trust, and trust is one of the biggest things that we do here in cheer. We are throwing people in the air. Any students looking forward to cheer can learn more about it tonight at Ramtastic. Our informational meeting will be March 21st at 6.30 in the Tech Wing. Um, any 
future Rampart students and current Rampart students can come out to that meeting with their parents and figure out when um, tryouts will be and we'll talk about what's going to happen for tryouts. We wish our cheerleaders and Coach Monique good luck at future games in the upcoming season. This has been Carter Phillips reporting for KRAM. Let's cheer for Coach Casas on three, one, two. Another thing cheer-worthy is the sports training class. This reorganized class will give athletes the opportunity to train for their sports during the day while also earning PE credits. Rampart will begin offering a new class next year geared towards athletes called sports training. Coach Royer explains the program and why it is being added. I think the demands put on the high school athlete are tremendous. Academics and athletes go hand in hand and they make for some pretty long days for our high school athletes. And what we're looking to do is provide them some opportunities during the school day to not just train physically, mentally, talk about hydration, nutrition, and anything and everything that we can do to help support our student athletes at Rampart High School. Uh, I mean, it's student driven. I mean, realistically, we're looking at what our kids need and, and the demands. If we can help train these kids mentally, physically uh, during the school day and shorten their after school practices, support the coaches that are out of the building. I think it's going to be a huge benefit to our kids. And that's really the end all be all is how can we help our kids? Student athletes give their thoughts on the program. I think it would definitely help after school balance because that means kids can go home if they really wanted to. They can also take it as a class. So that might hinder them in the way that they might have to move around the schedule for it. But overall, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it helps a lot that we can focus on our sports after school and also get the stuff that we need as a class and elective and have it go towards graduation and stuff like that. So it's really helpful. Honestly, I think it helped me save a lot of time after school as opposed to going home, just finishing homework or doing stuff I need to do out of school. I'm excited because that means I can still do weights again because I've done weights one and two and they don't have a weights three. So it gives people who want to continue with just working out like that a chance to do it again. What we're looking at right now is 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Uh, and that doesn't matter in season or off season, but we're really targeting all the athletes at Rampart. Um, we're blocking time, fourth period on blue and gold days to allow these kids to come in and train and get ready for their after school sports if it's in season or prepare for their upcoming sports if it's an off season. If you are interested in taking sports training next year, make sure to talk to your counselor. This has been Nathaniel Bergstrom reporting for KRAM. Sounds like fun. Despite the fact that Rampart pulls out of commission, our team isn't letting that stop them from giving the competition their all. Our girls swim team has been having a great season. Let's dive into this incredible team of young swimmers. The girls swim and dive season has come to a close with a very impressive record despite all the challenges they faced. And not having any divers. We asked them about some of the strengths they've had this season that help them keep moving towards success. We started our season 4-0 in dual meets, which is the best season that we've had since I've been coached. Um, I'm a very young team, so we have three-fourths of our team is freshmen and sophomores. So that means that we have a lot of growth that we can do over the next four years. We did lose our dual meet against Liberty by only one point, which that could go from a touching somebody out at the wall to um, having divers. We're definitely very um, close as a team and, you know, everyone works hard and, you know, we've been able to overcome a lot of challenges with, like, pool situations. We've got some, you know, just really great swimmers with a great attitude, some very strong swimmers coming in as freshmen, um, and some swimmers who are making a lot of progress that they never thought they could make and are really excited to see it. So it's really fun, all of those dynamics. You may have heard the noises of construction going on in the pool and wondering what is happening with it. We asked about our pool situation and how the swim and dive team has handled it. The number one thing that's wrong with the Ramparts pool is it's old. Um, you know, it's about 30 years old at this point, uh, 35, and so a lot of the plumbing is has gone bad, and it's mostly things in the mechanical room, and so they've had to redo a lot of the piping, uh, some of the heating, uh, and some of those kinds of things uh, that have just they've just worn out over time. So originally, Pine Creek's pool was supposed to be open in June, and then ours was going to be maintained and fixed over the summer, and. 
they, with construction and delays, just like with everything, it pushed back the opening of Pine Creek's pool until January. And so as of January, us, Air Academy, and Pine Creek all moved from our pool at Rampart to Pine Creek's pool. It looks like leaving at like the school at like 2.40, trying to figure out rides and then getting there, dealing with Pine Creek traffic, and then just hoping you make it to practice by 3 o'clock. They kind of thrown the swimmers off because they're, it's a brand new pool, certain pieces of it are different and it's taken some getting used to. Even with the pool situation, many of the swimmers qualified for state and the team achieved so much. The girls are swimming just as fast, if not faster, because we're at the tail end of our season where they should be able to swim in any pool to be successful. We've gotten a lot more individual state cuts compared to last season, which is really good. Um, I'm really excited and um, I'm looking forward to traveling to state. We hope to see the team thriving back in our home pool next year. This has been Nelly Rara Trejo reporting for KRAM. Congratulations for a winning 5 and 2 season and finishing 5th in Colorado Springs Metro League. That concludes this week's episode, Rams. This has been Rogan Harris and Caleb Bozier signing, signing off for KRAM. Drama. 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 <laughs> Springs Metro League. What is Metro? Metro Man. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified for more KRM. Or, you know, just don't. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Never.